Hey everybody, this is Chris with Up North Air Gunner. So today we're gonna to be taking a really deep dive into the FX integrated barrel harmonic tuning shroud. So this video is gonna be a really deep geeky dive into something that I've been working on for a really long time across a lot of different uh, air gun technologies as it pertains to dampening, stiffening, tuning, basically all the internal ballistics that go into air gun barrels. So what I've done in working with FX is basically baking it all into a special product. And then also wait to the very end of the video because there's something special for all of you air gunners. So in this video, we're gonna be covering how to install it, the technology behind it, and the history behind the project. So let's check it out. Okay, to install the, uh, the new harmonic uh, tuning shroud, it's really simple. So you're just gonna take off your original shroud here, and that's just by unscrewing it. So after you get done unscrewing it, you're just gonna pull it all the way off the barrel. And what you're left with, if you've not ever seen this before, the way the uh, entire FX barrel kits work is you've got this uh, threaded bit here at the end. And inside here, we have the carbon fiber sleeve and that's super easy to install. So I highly recommend using the uh, carbon fiber sleeve in conjunction with the uh, harmonic tuning shroud and all you have to do is just take off this threaded bit at the end and you're just going to insert the carbon fiber sleeve into it. You don't have to take the entire barrel kit out of the platform. You can install that in there, reattach the threaded end and you're good to go and you'll have the carbon fiber sleeve in there. Super simple. So now you're ready to install the new FX integrated harmonic tuning shroud, and it's really easy to put it on there. So you'll notice as you're pushing this back onto the barrel uh, before you actually screw it on in the end, there's gonna be increased tension and there's a reason for that. And we're gonna talk about that here in a minute, but there's actually some deresonating uh, properties that we've uh, engineered into the shroud itself. So it's gonna push on a little bit tighter, uh, but don't worry, and you're just gonna Tighten that back on just like normal, just like your regular original shroud. You're just going to tighten that back on. And you're going to feel it right there at the end. And you just want to do it hand tight. Okay. So now you've got the tuning weight here at the end. And you'll notice there's actually one of the long hashes has a dot on it. And that is going to be your top zero index okay and so this is going to be different from gun to gun depending on how it screws on so yours is going to be set up different than mine or anybody else's and let me show you how to index that to zero once you get your suppressor put on so for this example we're going to use the donnie fl sumo which is a really good pairing for the fx impact m3 that or a, a ronin so what you want to do is move that you're going to Move that weight by turning it to the right. And so it's actually tightening it up against the suppressor, okay? So there's no gap there. But you'll notice though that that dot, that zero index mark is no longer at the top. And so what you're gonna wanna do is move that so the dot on that longest hash is at top dead center with your shroud. And so what I typically do is I'm just gonna put a little dot of white paint, I sometimes even just use a little pencil mark, something to indicate where that is. And so really this doesn't mean anything as far as, uh, you know, one or two hashes is compared to my gun or your gun or somebody else's gun. As you rotate that weight, it's going to be very specific to your overall platform of your rifle. So you just want to have a common starting point with that dot aligned with a little dot that you'll have on your shroud. So that's how you get it started. So at that point, you're ready to start tuning. Um, you're going to tune it lefty-loosey. So that way the weight is actually moving back towards your breech. So as that weight is moving back and forth, that is where you're trying to find that harmonic accuracy node. So even just rotating that weight throughout one rotation, you're gonna find multiple harmonic accuracy nodes. So for me, for this gun, I know I've tuned it in the past, top dead center, with the dot plus two smaller hashes, I know that this is going to be tuned for a particular projectile. Now, as you change ammunition, as you change velocities, as you change anything about your platform, you're gonna to wanna to go through this process. So let's go ahead and uh, let's show you actually what that process looks like. So real quick, just to revisit, how I'm tuning this 
is absolutely not with velocity. I'm still at full power and the gun is still regulated at, right, what is that? Right at 100 bar, okay? So the reason why I'm not touching that and not choosing to, to tune with velocity is my standard deviation and extreme spread. Um, I want my extreme spreads typically below seven and my standard deviations ideally in that two to three range. And right now that's exactly where this gun is, okay? So, and I think a lot of times people really don't kind of really understand this with regulated air guns is yes, this is called a power wheel, but in my mind and the way I visualize it is you want that hammer spring and hammer to really be in harmony with the pressure that's behind it. And what I mean by that is if you're overpowering the valve by hitting the valve too hard or underpowering it, you're gonna see your extreme spreads and your uh, standard deviations kind of really not go all over the place, but they'll just be a little bit worse than what this is now. You'll see it up like in maybe 10 or 15 extreme spread. So to me right now, this gun is in harmony between the regulator, the hammer spring, the hammer, and the power plenum, okay? So I don't wanna touch that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just changing the point at which, as that barrel is oscillating, I'm just changing the point at which it's leaving the, the muzzle at the exact same time by shifting this weight. And in my mind, that's the right way to tune a gun for precision, okay? Tuning with velocity, it's the way we've been doing it for years, right? And then it works because eventually, you know, with the feet per second, leaving that barrel, the 700 millimeter barrel, at some point you're gonna time it. You're gonna time it just right. So the difference though is when you're tuning with velocity, think about this, we're dealing in feet per second, okay? So one to two feet per second difference, if you think about that, that's the length of your entire barrel. Okay, so the microscopic adjustments that really need to take place, again, this is like obsessive tuning, right? This is like crazy obsessive tuning. And to me, it's easier, right? I don't have to mess around with my regulator or my hammer spring tension, and I actually might make the gun worse just by trying to tweak it. Now you've started all over again, you're gonna have to burn through a whole nother thing of, you know, of pellets. So in my mind, one, this is a much more efficient way of tuning and you're getting much more precision in how you tune it. All right, so here we go. So we're at the zero dot on the FX integrated barrel harmonic tuner, and we're gonna do a 50 yard five shot group. Start in the upper left hand corner there. Let's see where we're starting off at here. Right, not bad, but at 50 yards, definitely know we can get better than that. So let's move it over uh, one and do another five shot group. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're rotating it to the next long hash mark. So you'll see these hash marks on the uh, barrel weight. There's some long ones and there's some short ones. And so um, I've really kind of, uh, kind of gotten it down to my process, especially with pellets. I'm going from big hash to big hash, and then to another big hash, and then from there, I'm going to bring it in there, kind of in between some of those bigger hashes, just to kind of see, just to kind of fine tune it. But that's a good way to start, is use those big hashes, go to each one, so. All right. I'm gonna call that not as good as the first one. And you'll notice the group shifted to the left. I don't know if that fifth shot was a flyer, but you'll notice that the group also shifted to the left. So let's go ahead and rotate it another hash, shoot another five shot group. So, We'll go and check that out. That actually looks to be maybe a little bit better than the second one, maybe about the same. But you'll notice it even shifted even further left and even down a little bit. So 
you're gonna see that happen as you're shifting that weight. It's not just gonna be shifting up and down because your uh, muzzle, the harmonics within your barrel, your muzzle, it's not doing like you always see like in the drawings of this perfect up and down wave. It's actually kind of oscillating through that harmonic uh, frequency. So yeah, we're gonna crank it another hash. Out of that five shot group, I definitely pulled that one. So, but the other four were pretty much right on top of each other. So let's go ahead and shoot the last verification group on that far right. Okay, so that is looking really good. Let's go check it out. So as you use the uh, FX integrated barrel harmonic tuner, you're gonna notice that there is a bit of a difference between tuning for slugs versus tuning for pellets. You know, pellets just inherently are just a lot more uh, forgiving, I guess is the right term. And at 50 yards, you're not gonna see a huge amount of variation with the tuner, but you are going to see enough to make a difference. So you'll even see, so this is our first group. Actually, that wasn't too bad. Um, this one definitely opened up and also notice it started shifting left. This one definitely starts shifting left. Not too bad. This one kind of stayed left. I think that one was me. And then we've got this one here, which is pretty darn good. Um, that's a that's a tear right there. So I think that's where it went through. So I like being at about 50 yards. Um, one, it's kind of giving me a better sense of, you know, is the is the projectile stable? 25 yards, I think, is just a little too close. 100 yards just gives it way too much um, opportunity for other environmental conditions to come into play. So of all of these groups, I'm going to definitely say maybe number one. So that was just number one here at the dot. So that's my dot or my zero hash. Worse... And then we got this one. So, so we just went ahead and we put it back to where the dot was on the harmonic tuner. And I'm gonna turn it just a little bit. So we know now what that dot does. And I'm just gonna put it on two little hashes right there. So let's shoot another group and let's see if it gets better or worse. We've got it on uh, the hash with the dot on it and a plus two smaller hashes. Um, <laughs> full disclosure, I actually shot two groups and I had the spotting scope uh, pointed at the wrong target. Uh, so what we're gonna do now, this is the, the ultimate verification. We've got two <laughs> one ragged hole groups down there and I'm going to go ahead and shoot a third now and see if all three of those groups have the exact same shape and position. So <laughs> that is perfectly tuned let's go check it out <laughs> all right let's turn this off what happened was i was actually pointing <laughs> the spotting scope at the, the wrong target but anyway i did that twice so you're gonna see two ragged hole groups and then a third ragged hole group that we just shot on video all using the exact same settings so that little mistake actually turned out to be like the ultimate verification test so there's the hash with the dot, plus two hashes. Just revisit, that's one hash on the dot, one hash on the dot, 
this is the two that I had the actual camera pointed at the wrong one. Look, one ragged hole, one ragged hole, one ragged hole. So these three here are shot with one hash on the dot plus two small hashes. And if you're doing that every single time, you know that you've made the proper tune, barrel tune. So again, let's take a look at this. Pretty good, pretty good, really good, really good, really good. And as we rotated that weight, notice we started getting some horizontal stringing on that. So there it is, that's the process. Let's talk a little bit about the actual technology that's baked into this thing. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the technology that we've engineered into the shroud. So one of the cool new features about this is being able to interchange these threaded muzzle, these are half inch 20, typical threaded size for air guns. If you wanna to move to, let's say a 22 caliber, you can pop that in, 25, you can pop that in, or 30, which is what I have in here right now. And that just comes off really easily with this uh, easy removal assistance hole here that we have at the end of the, the muzzle. Now, that isn't just for caliber change, because if you think about it, the OD or the outer diameter of these are actually all the same. It's half inch 20, right? To go on to your Donny FL suppressor, whatever suppressor you're running. The reason why we did this though, is a really cool feature that also integrates the air stripping effects of that muzzle threaded area. So that way as you're shooting 22, 25, or 30, the inner diameter of this muzzle thread also has an air stripping effect. So that way, as your projectile leaves the muzzle of the barrel, it's stripping off that dirty air around your projectile, also increasing your accuracy and your tightening up your shot groups. The other thing that we've got going on, you'll notice, is carbon fiber, whereas the original shroud is aluminum, all right? This was a very intentional uh, method that we decided to take and it's something really cool that um, I worked with FX We talked about it the reasons behind it So usually when we think of carbon fiber We always kind of focus on like the stiffening aspects that carbon fiber has right and that's what we're doing with um, the new FX carbon fiber sleeving kit The reason for the carbon fiber though on the shroud has more to do with the deresonating and the damping effects the reason why we did this after a lot of research is we looked actually in the other industries that are using carbon fiber to really reduce those vibrations that exist within whatever you're using, like bicycle frames, Indy cars. There's a lot of reasons why they do this. And it's just, you know, it's lightweight, which is one, but carbon fiber has exponentially more de-resonating properties than aluminum. Furthermore, the thermal characteristics of carbon fiber also has great benefits over aluminum. If you know anything about aluminum, it heats up really fast. It does not hold that heat for very long, but it heats up really quickly. So we're out in the sun today and you know, this is getting pretty warm, all right? So you're gonna have that thermal expansion. So as the sun is hitting that aluminum, you're gonna start getting a little bit of movement through that thermal flex. Uh, one of the cool things was like when I was in the army, we would go out and rebore site our cannons, the main battle tank cannon. And we would do that is because through the course of the day, as the sun, would beat down on one side of your barrel or the other, the barrel would actually make a figure eight throughout the day as it sat in the sun and obviously would change the point of impact. So we would go out and we would have to re sight our guns with this bore sighting device. So if you think about it, if you're leaving your gun sitting out in the sun, let's say during competition on the bench while you're hunting or just out on the range, the longer you're leaving your barrel out there, you're gonna have that thermal flex on the aluminum. Carbon fiber, doesn't have nearly that type of thermal bending effect. And the, and the vibration dampening effects this has also acts as a is an entire deresonating device through the, uh, the entire barrel kit. Furthermore, to kind of chase down some of that research that I have done over the last few years, not only like tuning with weights and moving weights up and down along the barrel, what we did is we actually engineered some deresonating rings that are inside the base of the shroud that actually squeeze that barrel so a lot of that 
harmonic resonance that you get throughout the barrel actually exists on the outside of the barrel. So as that projectile moves through the barrel, if you were able to look at that at a real microscopic level, that's actually moving through, creating vibrations throughout the body of the barrel. So by having these de-resonating rings that are engineered right into the shroud, you're muting some of that. The other really cool innovation that we were able to develop into the actual tuning weight aspect of the entire tuning shroud was a fully toolless design. And what I mean by that is when you rotate the weight back and forth, you don't need any tools. You don't need any Allen wrenches or anything to tighten this back down. So with my original design, I actually had kind of both of these things baked into it. I had a single uh, grub screw and also a method of making sure that there was tension in place. We'll come to find out through our R&D and prototyping, we didn't need any grub screws. So, so you can rotate it easily enough to make your adjustments, but then you can just set it and forget it. So you don't have to worry about as you shoot this. I have shot literally tens of pellets and boxes of slugs through this thing. And once you set it to your known point of tune, it's not gonna move. So we're having all of these things working in concert with each other from the stiffening of the barrel with the carbon fiber sleeve to the deresonating with the rings and the carbon fiber shroud and then the tuning benefits of the actual weight being able to shift that center of gravity back and forth at the muzzle and then having the stripping effects of these new muzzle adapters i mean you basically have the most advanced barrel system in the entire air gun industry right there all right, so there it is. Like I said, this has been a long uh, journey for me. Uh, this video is kind of meant to sort of kind of document my entire progress and all of it culminating into this product or these products with FX air guns. So if you've been following me on YouTube, uh, if you go back all the way back to the very beginning of the creation of my channel, I was really getting into this with big bore air guns and tackling these topics. And eventually I got into smaller caliber and more precision shooting with air guns. And during that process, I basically was developing do-it-yourself, basically plumbing projects, <laughs> getting a lot of parts from just going to Home Depot and finding a lot of things that I could bake into a shroud. So I had to kind of like a lifelong dream kind of come true. Here in Michigan, we have a hunting show that's on PBS called Michigan Out of Doors. And uh, for that show, I was invited on and we talked about a lot of different topics and we covered a little bit and you actually get to see the kind of very first version of this shroud that I was developing at that time that had a lot of uh, kind of stiffening aspects to it. So during the trajectory of that project, I started putting in things like a harmonic tuning weight that I was actually moving back and forth on the barrel in the form of a collar uh, weight. And it worked great. Uh, the physics behind it, as you move that weight back and forward and the further I actually got it closer to the muzzle, the more ability that I had to manipulate those harmonics. Though well, the problem with that design though, is I had to take the shroud off every single time, move the weight, measure to see where it was on the barrel. And it really just wasn't, you know, I couldn't turn that into a consumer product. So it worked, it's just wasn't scalable to really what I was looking for. So during this journey, this journey of discovery and doing all this do-it-yourselfer stuff, getting these parts from hardware stores, I penciled out a design that was going to be integrated and or removable with the FX Impact. So as I started looking at manufacturing partners to partner with me to develop a prototype, so shortly after I had the opportunity to actually test some of the existing technologies that are out there in the firearm sector, some deresonating stuff and some also some barrel tuners to show that it actually works. But we ran into some issues with fitment because in the air gun sector, Unfortunately, a lot of the air guns that we have, the shrouds are different sizes or the threads that are at the end are different lengths. And one of my other design goals was to make sure that it could work on all air guns, not just bottle guns, but also tube guns. So at that time, I started looking over into the precision firearm sector and I noticed there's just a whole market full of these, these tuning weights where that tuning weight basically revolves around threading and moves that weight back and forth. We'll come to find out that innovation was actually invented by Browning back in 1992, whenever I was a sophomore in high school. So if you know anything about patents, 20 years later, that patent expired. So the entire precision shooting sector exploded with a ton of different options that uses that same concept of moving that weight back and forth. So neither myself nor FX invented that, but what we have done is we have perfected it 
for the air gun sector. Taking my original design and working with FX, we were able to prototype and come out with a couple different versions and test them. So happy now today, our first look at this is we are also coming out with a detachable version that takes a, a lot of the technologies that are in the integrated shroud in a detachable version. So you can put this on any air gun that can be attached to a half 20 threaded muzzle. So to attach the detachable harmonic tuner, it just goes right on your existing muzzle threads. Just like that. And notice what it does is actually extends your barrel just a little bit and it clears the tube if you're using a tube gun and it is made to be very low profile so that way if you're using like a donny fl uh, the fx air guns version of the suppressor has a nice low profile design so that fit and finish stays the same that is going to work with most any other air gun regardless of the size of the shroud that you have regardless of how short or long the threading is that you have on your air gun and we were able to include the toolless design and the air stripping effects of the muzzle. So we were super excited to offer that to the air gun industry. So thanks everybody for joining me. Definitely check these out. It has completely changed the way I tune my guns. It'll change the way you tune your air gun. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Take care.